Hello and welcome to Sonder. My name is Maggie. I am a knitter, spinner, sewist, bibliophile, physician, and new mom living in Denver, Colorado. How is everyone? I am coming to you from a very cold and sunny but very cold day in January. It is Monday, January 30th, and it is, I think, three degrees Fahrenheit, which is like negative 16 degrees Celsius, and it is 1230, so this is kind of as warm as it's going to get today, um, which is not totally unusual, but it's colder than it normally gets, at least here in Denver, so, you know, we are really, uh, embracing the winter vibes here in this household. I am currently wearing my warmest sweater that I own, which is a worsted weight colorwork sweater that I knit out of Shelter, um, Brooklyn Tweeds Shelter, which is their worsted weight um, woolen spun yarn. And this is the bouquet sweater by Junko Okamoto. Let me just show it off. I really, really loved knitting this sweater and learned a few new techniques for it that if you go back to some of my other podcasts, I know that I talked about previously. <sighs> Y'all, I am so tired. Um, I would just like to start off by saying, I'm sorry that this is coming out a little bit later. Honestly, nobody probably even notices except me, but I, had the honor and the privilege of being called in for a Jeppo shift uh, last night. So for those of you who are not in healthcare, although I'm sure that this type of getting called in is in many, many different fields, but in uh, our residency here, and I think in most healthcare facilities, I don't know, I can't talk right now. Why am I recording a podcast, you may ask? I'm not sure <laughs> because I wanted to talk with you. Um, anyway, uh, so for those of you who are not in healthcare, I got called in for a 24 hour shift in the NICU, the neonatal ICU, um, which is the ICU where lots of little preemies and babies who need a little bit of help right when they're born go in the hospital. And um, boy, oh boy, am I sleepy. So. Um, when you are working in healthcare, you know, it, you may have never thought about this, but if your doctor or, um, advanced practice provider or nurse, if they are not able to come to work for various different reasons, like being sick, having their ch child be sick, having a family emergency, then there is a backup system of people who are there rearing and ready to go in and work. And uh, that is what I got called in to do. And so I am probably not gonna be terribly coherent today because I am coming off of a 24 hour shift in the NICU. But you know what, y'all? I wanted to come on and I wanted to talk with you. Um, so today's podcast is going to be pretty jam-packed. As a result of me coming off of this NICU shift, I have not had any time to write up any notes or anything. So this is just going to be a very off-the-cuff conversation between you and I. But we have lots to talk about. I have a couple of different finished objects. I have some whips to talk about. I have some spinning to talk about, some sewing, a giveaway, because y'all, we have reached 2,000 subscribers. If we're being completely honest, I really thought that uh, this was just going to be a place where I post videos and my mom comes on and watches them, which, hi mom, I know she does come on and watch them, but I am absolutely blown away by 
this community and how fun it's been to connect with you all and chat with you and especially with coming out with like different types of videos it's been so fun to show you a little bit about my life and connect with people from all over the world it is an incredible privilege and i feel so honored to have this community so Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I am gonna be putting together a giveaway, so stay tuned and I'll kind of talk about that giveaway here in a little bit. Um, and then the last thing that I wanna talk about is the books that I have read in January, the books I am going to read, and also a very beautiful article that I read in the New York Times that literally made me cry and I have since sent it to many of my knitting friends. Y'all, I don't think I've ever been brought to tears by an editorial, but it happened. It happened today, which might be because I'm very sleep deprived. Have I mentioned that I'm sleep deprived? Anyway, um, and so I think my emotions are a little like all over the place, but nevertheless, like, I was brought to tears by this editorial, so I wanted to share it with you and uh, read a couple little of my favorite excerpts from it. I don't wanna give too much away because I want you to go read it because I want you to be as moved as I was, but let's get started. I am drinking a Coke Zero because sometimes your girl's just basic and uh, needs a little caffeine and that's where we're at. So cheers to you. I hope you have some knitting or spinning or weaving or whatever to work on and uh, let's get into it. I am going to start off by showing some finished objects. I have two finished objects today. The first is the pair of socks that I've been working on. So this is a pair of fingering weight socks that I knit out of the Farmer's Daughter's Fibers Sock Squad January colorway. And I really loved knitting this sock. I am so into socks this year. It's so funny because I feel like Marlisa on her podcast and like Stephen West, like I feel like everybody's talking about socks. And I honestly used to be kind of like, I don't care about socks, but now I do care about socks and I really love them. If you are not interested in socks, hopefully this just allows you to see this beautiful skein of yarn. So this is a lovely sort of periwinkle blue color that has specks of darker blue and magenta. And then the contrast I did heel and toe is in this sort of medium gray blue. I love these. I've been talking on all of my different vlogs this month about writing this up as a pattern, and I have some very mixed feelings about it. I went on to Ravelry, and I have noticed that there are a couple of patterns on there that are essentially the same exact sock. So this was a sock that I just like did. I didn't follow a pattern. Um, but this pattern does exist. I know that if you search for like Pico socks in Ravelry, there's one free one and there is one pay for one. And so, especially with there being a pay for one, like I am not here to take money from small businesses by putting out a free pattern. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna write some very detailed notes in my Ravelry page and if you have any questions about how to knit these socks, please reach out to me. But this is a fingering weight sock. There are 64 stitches. It is cuff down. I cast on 64 stitches, knit 12 rounds, did the like knit two together, yarn over round, 12 more rounds, and then sort of tied down the top and then just knit a vanilla sock. So that is like really the only thing that I did that is different is just like the Pico top, which like honestly you can find that anywhere. I think the only thing that might be helpful to know is that this distance from here to the top of the sock was 12 rows. So yeah, my beautiful socks. I am really enjoying these. I think that what I'm gonna do 
is actually fold these up and put them in a box for me to open at the end of the year because I have a lot of very ratty socks, but pretty soon we're gonna be going into springtime. And yeah, I think it would just be a really beautiful gift to open up at the end of the year. So that is the plan and that is my first finished object. The next finished object I would say is like 99.9% .9 finished. And the thing that is not done is I have not woven in this one end, which why I didn't do that before I started podcasting, we'll never know. But this is a hand spun hat that I made. This is a one by one hat um, that honestly, I didn't follow a pattern for this. I just cast on 80 stitches. This is about a worsted weight yarn. And then I just did some decreases at the top once I was getting very, very low on the amount of yarn I had. So let me just show this to you. Honestly, I put my hair up with a clip because I was a little bit um, self-conscious about it after coming off of a night shift, but now it's down and anyway this is such an awesome hat i'm so psyched i mean y'all knitting with your hands bun is the best i mean there's i don't know why i didn't just weave that in but this is like the first thing that i've ever actually knit out of my hand spun and it was so fun um so yeah this is, I think this is merino, like superwash merino in the pink grapefruit colorway from Wound Up Fiber Arts. Amazing. So yeah, very proud of this. I need to weave in this end because I would like to wear this hat today, but I just finished blocking it. So um, yeah. Is that not amazing? And y'all, it's like, there are some thick and thin spots. Let me get a little closer. Like, this is by no means perfect, but you know what? I literally spun this from wool. Anyway, I love it. So, this is my second and final finished object. Let me put my hair back up. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. All right, so let's move on to some works in progress. I had talked about um, the socks that I've been working on. And so I thought I would show off my couple of sock whips that I have. So the first is another one of these Pico socks because y'all, I'm obsessed. It's so good. I just, I do like the top of a ribbed, like the ribbing of the top of a sock, but there is something just so beautiful about that Pico edge that I think just really shows off these beautiful colorways that people come up with. It's incredible I'm blown away. I'm going to take these off because I feel like they're like making some noise that is very distracting for me and hopefully it wasn't distracting to you all. Um, so this next colorway that I am using is the Indigenous Collective again by Farmer's Daughters Fiber and this is the December 2022 color from the Indigenous Collective. And it was based off of this novel that I actually haven't read, but it was a sock set and I adored it. So it came with a mini skein that I've since wound into this tiny ball. So it's this beautiful kind of brownie red. Most it's red, but there is like a hint of brown to it. Well, I just threw that ball across the room. <laughs> Here's the other one. Um, and so these are the two colors that it came with. And I followed the just excellent advice of numerous people. And instead of trying to knit my socks two at a time with one string coming from the outside and one string coming from the inside, I wound the skein into two balls and I'm still knitting them 
two at a time, but it's just much easier for me to manage. So this is the sock. This one's a little bit further. So this is the same sock as the last one, but I just blocked the color work a little bit differently. So what I did is I did the same cuff and then I just knit like an inch and a half of the contrast color and then I went straight into the uh, main color for the sock and the rest of the sock, including the toe and everything, is going to be just out of this main color yarn. So the only um, color that I'm using from the mini is just in this top bit. And I really, really love this. I think it's so beautiful and I haven't really seen people use the, the mini skein in this way. And I just think it's a fun reminder that like you can use the mini skein for heels, toes, and cuffs or just heels or just cuffs or whatever. But you can also use it for color work or for other just like different blocks of color. And yeah. I really love it. It's so beautiful. And I will put the cover of the book here so that you can see kind of the inspiration and what they made. And y'all, they just nailed it. It was so beautiful. So I have finished the cuff, the heel flap, and the gusset of this sock. And then I switched back to this sock and I am knitting the heel flap right now. So I'll finish the, the cuff is all finished. I just need to do the heel flap and the gusset. So that's kind of how I'm doing it. I did the cuff of one, then the cuff of the other, then the heel flap and gusset of one, the heel flap and gusset of the other. I'll knit the, the foot and foot and toe and toe, and then I'll be done with both at the same time. And it's going so much faster. It's really fun. I really like knitting. Uh, socks in that way. It's just, yeah, I feel like oftentimes I really used to suffer from second sock syndrome and, you know, it's very early on in the year, so who knows what's going to happen. But for now, this is working great. I did get my February sock squad and this is it. So this is the February um, Sock Squad, and this is on their Rocky Mountain Pearls. So this is 80% Superwash BFL and 20% Nylon. And it's really beautiful. I am planning on knitting this free pattern for um, kind of like lacy heart socks, because it's February and I'm just leaning in, y'all. I'm leaning in. So... I am going to wind up this beautiful skein of mauve yarn and knit up those socks. I think for this one, I will similarly to my first pair and my finished object, I will use this beautiful kind of lightly colored mini skein as the heel and the toe. For some reason, I like the top of the cuff to just be one kind of more cohesive color, whether that's like the big block of red sticking out of the top of my boots or the big block of blue. I don't know why. I just, I prefer to not have contrast cuffs. It's just a thing for me. So that is the plan for these. And I'll try to put up a picture of the sock at some point during this discussion so you can see what I'm going to be knitting in February. And if you want to knit along, I would love to see your progress. Okay. The next work in progress I'm going to talk about is my wool and honey sweater, which I have put quite a bit of work on since my vlog. So this is the wool and honey. It is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, and I am knitting it in the Biche et Bouche Le Petit Lambs Wool in the soft orange brown color. And this is just this beautiful woolen spun fingering weight yarn. And because it's fingering weight, it ain't fast, all right? It ain't fast, but I am loving it nonetheless. So let me show it off again. I feel like there's like something little happening here, but you don't actually see it in person. You know, the camera, who knows? 
Anyway, I really, really love this. I think I'm gonna wear this constantly. And this is actually remaking a sweater that I knit out of a superwash yarn that I wore and loved. And it's just been worn and loved and I needed a new one. So yeah, I'm really, really excited for this. This is a really fun sweater to knit. And I would say is a relatively easy sweater. This was actually, I think, this was my second sweater ever that I ever knit. And it's kind of hilarious. At one point, I will show the inside of this sweater because I didn't actually know that you needed to weave in ends. And so there are ends that are like really long and are just sort of like tied together and like loose in the sweater. And I'm just like, what were you thinking? But I honestly just didn't know. So there you go. But yeah, this is a really fun sweater. You get to start off by um, doing this really cool kind of slip stitch, elongated stitch technique that is super easy and really straightforward. And Andrea Mowry has like a wonderful pattern that's really easy to follow as well as just like incredible um, support. So if you're like, I don't know how to do this, then she will walk you through it. And she has like a staff of people to help. So, um, I love it so much. <gasps> it's so good. So I have not too much longer to go on this. Let me see. I believe, yeah. This is where I was the last time we spoke and I knit about two and a half inches on it in the last week, which for a fingering weight sweater to me is a lot, okay? And I think I have about half an inch more to go before I switch to the ribbing. So I'm almost done with the body of this sweater. I really wanna finish it. It's also a sweater that because it's fingering weight, it's something that I'll be able to wear in the spring, summer, fall, like I'll be able to wear it all four seasons. So it's something I really need to prioritize finishing. Let me pause for just a moment and blow my nose because I am also still getting over this cold my daughter gave me. All right, I'm back. All right, my next work in progress that I wanna talk about is my, forgetting if this is the Monday or the Wednesday sweater. I think it's the Monday sweater, but it's by Petite Knit and it's her really nice raglan sweater that she has. Well, one of many. I am knitting this sweater out of Nutidin yarn, which is a really beautiful unspun yarn that I am holding double. This is a really just scrumptious mixture of wool that is gray, orange, peach, pink. It comes off as gray, but it has a lot of depth to the color that honestly I don't think comes off that well on the camera, but in person is so amazing. So this is a top-down raglan sweater that I am knitting with my mother-in-law. So I'm just, you know, trying to stay ahead of her so that I can kind of show her where to go and what to do next. This is amazing. I was showing you the back. Who's to say? So, ugh. This yarn is so soft and there is such a halo. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So this was mainly the project that I worked on while I was in the NICU last night um, because you gotta stay awake and you gotta be vigilant. But uh, yeah, I needed something to work on. So. You can see Hagrid. This is a progress keeper that is by Simply Serving, and it is Hagrid with his umbrella. So good. Anyway, that is how much I knit 
since last week. So that is honestly like probably five inches, maybe six inches. Okay. All right. I see you. Ain't bad. So yeah, I still have quite a bit of knitting to go on this bad boy. And this is something I would really like to finish sometime in February, just because otherwise I'm not really going to be able to wear it until next winter, but maybe camping. I love it. The thing that I really love, I mean, there are many things that I really love about knitting with this yarn, but one of the things that I really, really adore is that there is quite a bit of lanolin in it. And so I am one of those people who, you know, we live in a very dry place. There is very little humidity in the air here. And it is so dry and cold, especially in the winter, that my hands get really dry. And with working with my hands so much, like we all do as crafters, it can just get rough, you know? And the beauty of the Newton yarn is it's so, it's processed so little that there is still quite a bit of, sorry, I'm drinking a soda and I just belched. Anyway, um, there is so much lanolin still in this yarn that I swear while I'm knitting it, it feels like I'm putting lotion on my hands. Like not in a gross way, in a way that like, you walk away from knitting for like 30 minutes on this sweater and I like want to rub my hands together because it just feels so like scrumptious. Like, ooh, I don't know, it's very decadent. So get yourself some rustic yarn that they haven't totally washed the lanolin out of and just enjoy the beauty that it is to uh, moisturize while you knit. It's amazing. Anyway, so that is the Monday slash maybe Wednesday sweater by Petite Knit. And that is all of my knitting content. So I wanted to move on to some of my spinning. So I wanted to show this off, which I'm gonna be very awkward because I obviously don't wanna give away my address, but this is the, show it off. This is the Longway Homestead. And this is their Breed of the Month Club. It's amazing, y'all. It is like $22 a month, Canadian. So it's like 16 US dollars a month. And they send you four ounces of a different breed each month that you can use to spin up in two yarn. So this was this month's and I actually have signed up for two years of this. Like I signed up for a year and then I wanted to keep going and so I signed up for another year. So I have two four ounce um, bats. It's, it's not a bat but I have two four ounce bits of this fiber and I am spinning it up into yarn. But I wanted to show this because it's so cool. So it comes in this package. And it is vacuum sealed with this. So this is the breed of the month. So it will come with a breed and then about the wool from that breed. So you can read about the different types of wool, beautiful pictures from these small farms where they get the wool from. And then this is just the card. So you can like remember exactly what this amount of wool was. But I wanted to show you how cool this is. So it comes in this little vacuum sealed container and I'm ready to break this open. So you literally just open up this vacuum sealed container and within one day, this will hoof up into the most delicious thing to spin with you could possibly imagine. So I have been just loving spinning with this. Let me just pull off a little bit of this fiber so you can see. It is like the easiest thing in the world to spin. It's so beautiful. It's like the preparation is incredible. It's so easy to spin. It's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. And again, this still has 
quite a bit of lanolin in it. So it is just so beautiful to spin. I'm spinning it on my shacked um, matchless wheel. And because I had two bits of this beautiful fiber, what I did is I split it into um, 66 grams each, because each four ounce is 100 grams. So I essentially split the fiber into thirds and I am spinning it into a three ply. My hope, this is Cordale, my hope is that I can make this into like a worsted weight, DK weight or worsted weight yarn that is really beautiful for showing cables. So I purposely did the three ply so that it's a really round, really plump yarn that hopefully will show cables well and I can knit it into a cowl or a hat or something like that. So this is my first bit of singles. And yeah, I'm really loving it. So this is the first one. I had to break into that because I've spun um, the other 33 grams. Then I have to take 33 grams from that. And then I'll have 66 grams left because math. I'll probably have, you know, math. You'll have slightly more, 67. Um, and then I'll ply the three of those together and make this beautiful yarn. I'm really enjoying this. And it's just so smooth. Like this yarn is so easy to spin consistently. It's just been a dream. So highly, highly recommend The Long Way Homestead. It's so fun. And there's like little bits of veg matter. There's like a little bit of lanolin. It's so enjoyable. So I know this is probably not that fun to look at because it's literally just some cream fiber that I'm spinning, but Hopefully, during my February podcast, I will have a finished skein of yarn for you to show you. Okay, the last thing that I wanted to talk about that is making related is the giveaway, which kind of segues into some sewing. Grab my fabric scraps here. So... Um, I reached 2,000 subscribers, which is bananas to me. Also because I get palpitations whenever I talk in front of a group of like more than two people. Like I really, really hate public speaking. And so the fact that I'm kind of talking to like thousands of people at once when I make these little videos is mind boggling. But I love this community so much. And so I wanted to give back by putting together a prize package. So what will be in the prize package is a few different things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show off the fabric that I am going to make. And at the very end of the video, I will show you the finished bag that I'm making. But I need to film this during the daylight, etc. So I'm just going to show you the fabrics and the other little bits and pieces that are going to go into this prize package. There will be a sweater sized project bag. There will be two skeins of yarn, some progress keepers slash stitch markers and a book. So that is what I'm going to put in and anywhere in the world can enter to win this. So to enter to win, you just have to like, you have to subscribe and leave a comment below that tells me your favorite genre of book. Like what types of book do you like to read? And maybe like one or two of your most recent favorite reads. The reason why I want that to be the question is that I, after I find a winner, am going to go shopping in my book in my bookshelves and find a book that I think you will love. So like, subscribe, and leave a comment below of your favorite book that you've read recently or and or the types of genres of books you like to read, um, which could be anything. I like to read, honestly, pretty much anything except like nonfiction is not my favorite, but everything else, like I'm 
I'm all for, which also means that I have a lot of different types of books on my bookshelf. I have fantasy, I have science fiction, I have literary fiction, historical fiction, um, romance, like young adult, mystery, horror, I've got it all. So thriller, I got it all. So tell me what types of books you like to read and you could be entered to win this awesome, awesome prize. So. I have a ton of fabric scraps and I'm gonna use these fabric scraps to quilt a sweater sized project bag. Um, I purposely picked these so that they're really like neutral and not gendered because there are people here who um, are men, women, neither, both, you know, there are people, all sorts of different types of people. So I wanted to pick some neutrals to make a really cool um, project bag that anybody would love. Not that like colors are gendered because that's ridiculous, but anyway, this is, I'll just show off the fabrics. And then um, after this segment, I will cut in like the actual finished prize package, but here, some mushrooms. I got some yellow fabrics. This is just like a really neutral white. And these are all just quilting cotton. Like some of them, this is the most that I have of this one. Some of them are really small amounts that I am just gonna piece together very willy nilly to make a very cool project bag. I'm pretty excited. And I'm gonna sew this up tonight and I will bring you along for that process. So this is going to be a project bag. And then I'm gonna include a couple of other things. So I have this skein of Yampa Valley Fiberwork. So this is really, really special wool that comes from I've talked about it a bunch of times, but this comes from the sheep that are raised in the valley that I grew up in and is spun by a mill in the town like 30 minutes away from my town. And I just love this. I have a few different skeins of this and I made it into a hat. It is definitely next to skin soft. It is incredible. And it is worsted weight. Um, it's called Sunshine in Your Soul, and it is 200 grams of 100% wool. So beautiful. And then I am also including this skein of Sweet Sparrow Yarns. Ooh, I can't read her beautiful handwriting, but the colorway is there. And this is a skein of a really sort of like bluish gray beautiful hand dyed skein so this is fingering weight i think you could use this to make all sorts of things from a hat to um, a shawl or a scarf the world is your oyster and then this is a worsted weight so it'll be the project bag these skeins of yarn I'm gonna throw in some tea from my favorite shop. So I will put in some footage of this beautiful shop. It is this witchy shop right down the street from my house that I just love. It has all the weird witchy things you could ever imagine. And they also have an apothecary there um, for the like sort of green witches, like herbal witches and I am gonna get some of my favorite tea from there and send it to you. And then finally, I went shopping in my own Progress Keeper collection, and I may be adding to this. Y'all, I can I tell you a story? So Maria of Woolen Forest, she was having a shop update um, just a couple days ago, might've been yesterday. I was on my 24 hour shift, we were rounding, and I was like, I need to go to the bathroom at 10 a.m. because her update was at like noon her time, which is 10 a.m. my time. And I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. And I went to the bathroom and I was like, bah, bah, bah. and uh, I got some awesome uh, progress keepers slash stitch markers from her. So 
I will probably throw one of those on here too when it arrives, but I have a little fancy tiger one. I have a couple that have been made by various different people. And then this one is one of my very favorites from my friend um, of the Time Weaver, Nicole of the Time Weaver podcast. She makes gorgeous, gorgeous progress keepers slash stitch markers. And she sent me this one. And so I wanted to part with one of them and share the love with you all. So um, I'm gonna add a couple of other um, little making accoutrement to this, but yeah, so that will be the prize. So again, if you want to enter to win that giveaway, like, subscribe, and leave a comment of your favorite genre of books and maybe some books that you've read recently. My plan is to draw the winners of this in February, the end of February. So um, this similar sort of podcast, but at the end of February, that is the one where I will announce the winner and I'll get that out to you as soon as possible in the end of February slash beginning of March. So I'm really excited. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is this amazing editorial and some readings. Let me go grab my books. Okay, let's talk about books, y'all. <sighs> okay, so this month I read three and a half books. I am almost finished with my last book of January, which technically I think I will actually still finish in January. Um, so, but I'll talk about that next month. Let's do it that way. So these are the three books that I have to talk about. Okay, the first, y'all, this is one of the weirdest books I've read in a while, but also so, so amazing. This is A Psalm for the Wild Built. A Monk and Robot book by Becky Chambers. This was incredible. Let me just read you the inside flap. It's been centuries since the robots of Pinga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot there to honor the old promise of checking in. The robot has one question, what do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. So this is essentially about a monk who decides that they want to change their life and they go into the wilderness to be a tea monk. And what it means to be a tea monk is essentially to be someone who makes tea for someone who is having a hard day or having a hard time and needs someone to talk to and talk through things and they make a tea for them and they sit and they listen and it is so so beautiful i adored this book it is very short it is only like it's less than 200 pages 145 pages and it feels like a warm hug. It's so strange. So this tea monk, they go into the wilderness and while in the wilderness, they meet a robot and the robot comes to learn about them and grow and they kind of learn together about humanity and machines and the world and how they're feeling and it's just so good. Um, there was one quote that I really loved. This one. Reading this book felt like a warm cup of tea made by someone who loves me. It made me cry the good sort of tears, the sort when someone is unexpectedly kind to you at the moment you most need it. It was so good. There was something about this book. Let me just read one small portion that really made me think, especially as a physician, you know, all of us, when we come to reading, we come to it with our own lived experiences. And one of the things I love about reading 
is that you can get a glimpse into the lived experience of someone else. And this was very interesting to get the glimpse of the lived experience of a machine, which was fascinating. Um, the other thing that I loved about this is that the main character um, is non-binary and uses they, them pronouns. And I, the thing that I really loved about it is it wasn't a whole thing. It just like was the pronouns that were used. You know, like I think that sets such a beautiful precedence for like people don't have to like, it shouldn't matter, you know, like you get to be whoever you want to be and that's fine. And we just need to like get over caring about, I mean, it's hard because now suddenly I'm like, no, it really, really does matter. <laughs> like using the correct pronouns are incredibly, incredibly important, but it doesn't have to be this like whole story about a person. Like. The fact that a person is non-binary is one small portion of them as a person. And I just loved how that was portrayed here because it wasn't like the whole story of the protagonist was that they were non-binary and that that is difficult. Like that was just who they were and like moving on, you know, it was wonderfully done. But so I love that you get the chance to kind of look into someone else's life, but I also love that you get the opportunity, and in this book, I think in particular, you get the opportunity to think about and reflect with your own life. And so I just circled this part. Um, so in this portion, we have Dex, who is the main character, and we have Moscap, who is the robot. And they are talking about kind of the environment that they're in, which is kind of like a, it's a place that Dex finds beautiful, but they also don't think that they would have thought it was beautiful because it's kind of like a dead, decaying place in the wilderness that they're talking about. It's pretty here, Dex said. I wouldn't have imagined I'd say that about a place like this, but yes, it is, Moscap said, as if making a decision within itself. It is, dying things often are. Dex raised an eyebrow, that's a little macabre. Do you think so? said Moscap with surprise. Hmm, I disagree. It absently touched a soft fern growing nearby, petting the fronds like fur. I think there's something beautiful about being lucky enough to witness a thing on its way out. Ugh, this was just like a very powerful thing for me to read, especially someone who um, worked in the medical ICU through a pandemic where a lot of people died and there's something really hard about doing that job and I I was there for for a lot of death and held a lot of people's hands as they died um, and you know hugged families who lost loved ones and I do think that there is something really beautiful about being able to be someone who people can trust to make space for what they're going through and to honor the life that they had, you know? Um, so yeah, there are just like many, many little tidbits in this book like that, that will make you think and reflect and it's just beautiful. So there is a sequel to this. Um, Tommy of the Moonstone Makes podcast told me about that. So I need to pick up the sequel to this because I am in love and this made me think so much. I loved it. The next book that I read was Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. I talked about this a lot, a lot, a lot in my last vlog, so I'm not going to go too in depth with it and I'm not going to reread the inside um, cover. But if you want to hear me awkwardly read the flap of this, then please go back to the last video because I did that even though it's very long. But this is a beautiful literary fiction novel that follows the course of three different people's lives. Well, three different timelines. One of them is Constantinople, like way, way back in the day um, during like the siege of Constantinople and you're following two characters in that timeline. One of them is a woman who, or a girl, a young girl who's on a spaceship like thousands of years later after there's been kind of like an apocalypse on earth and they are going to another planet on this spaceship trying to colonize a different planet. 
And the third is kind of a modern day octogenarian who is in a library helping children learn a play. And this book was so good. This book is really about kind of libraries and stories and the ways in which stories connect people. It is about love, it is about loss, it is about um, climate change, it's about heroes and where they come from and how they're made. It is so beautifully written and everything is brought together. These three disparate stories are brought together in oh, such a beautiful way. I adored this book. I highly recommend it. It's definitely strange. It definitely, you know, follows multiple different types of stories. Like in one story, you have contemporary fiction, you have historical fiction, and you have science fiction. And the fact that he was able to bring together those three genres into one overarching story was magnificent. So, I highly recommend Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. I've also read All the Night We Cannot See, um, which won the Pulitzer Prize. Also amazing. Um, but I think I liked this one better, which is bananas. But I also love like fantasy and science fiction and stuff. So I think I just really loved how he wove all that together. It was masterful. So Cloud Cuckoo Land, highly, highly recommend. And then the last book that I read and finished is Frederick Bachman's Us Against You. And this is the second book in the Bear Town trilogy. Um, so this book follows a small town in Sweden called Bear Town. And it is kind of like a working class town that is really kind of down and out. And in the previous book, Bear Town, this really horrible thing that happened that involved the star of the hockey team and one of the young girls who lives in this town. And this is sort of directly following that and further goes into the town's response to what happened. And it follows some of my favorite characters of all time, namely Benji and Amat. I it's really complex, it's really interesting. And I think that if you come from, like, I'll just speak for myself. I come from a pretty blue collar family. And I think that the portrayal of being blue collar in this was really, really good. And yeah, I just loved it. I also really enjoy hockey, but I think that these books, like I think the Bear Town trilogy so far, uh, meaning Bear Town and then Us Against You has made me like hockey even more than I did before. However, I will say that Bear Town, the first in this trilogy, um, has much more like hockey scenes where this is more focused on the town and the people and the characters that you were introduced to in the first book. So yeah, it goes more in depth into some characters. It's so good. It's hard because I feel like I can't really talk about this book without like giving away Bear Town. And I think that the roller coaster that you go on with Bear Town is so good that I don't want to give that away. But wow, I highly recommend reading Bear Town and I loved this book as well. I will say that for both Bear Town and this book, there are a lot of content warnings, like a lot. And so I definitely would recommend reading the content warnings before you go into these books because they're dark. Like there is a lot that they're talking about. And um, I think that it's very beautifully done. But I think that if you have your own lived experience and lived trauma, then that's probably not something you want to read. So um, the last book that I am reading is one that I am listening to. And this was a recommendation that I got from Tommy, um, Dynamite Trujillo of like Moonstone Makes. And she brought up the, oh, I'm forgetting the name. It's like The Wives Under the Sea. I think that's what it's called, The Wives Under the Sea. It's hard because I film this on my phone. And so I can't look it up because I'm reading it. So 
I will put up, obviously, a uh, picture of the cover of this novel, but it is so fascinating. It is, I'm about halfway through, so I'm not totally finished with it yet, but it follows these two wives and one of them goes on an expedition, kind of a research expedition on a submarine and she is lost undersea. And it is about, it, it has dual timelines with like before the expedition, during the expedition, and then after the expedition when she's come back, but she is changed. And it's so good. Thank you, Tommy. It's so good. It is really, really beautifully written. And it's kind of, I would say, like a thriller, magical realism, literary fiction, deep dive into this relationship. It's so good. I'm like really enjoying it. It's kind of like eerie and murky and like, Oh, I'm like, what is going to happen? I don't know. Things are happening and I can't talk about them because I think part of the beauty of this book is like going through it and figuring out and kind of becoming aware of what's going on. I'm being very vague because I don't want to give it away. But part of the beauty of this book is like going on the ride and not really knowing what's coming. So The Wives Under the Sea, so good. All right. The very last thing that I wanted to talk about was this editorial that one of my best friends, Sutton, sent to me this morning. And y'all, all right. I'm going to be b vulnerable with y'all and let you know that this made me cry not once, not twice, but thrice. Okay? Um... That could very well be that I haven't slept in 24 hours, but I think it's more that I felt so seen by this editorial. I have no words. It's so beautiful. So the editorial that I'm talking about, it was a guest essay in the New York Times. It was published on January 27th, 2023. <clears throat> so just a few days ago, it's called The Revolutionary Power of a Skein of Yarn. And it is written by Peggy Orenstein. Um, and she is the author of Unraveling, What I Learned About Life While Shearing Sheep, Dying Wool, and Making the World's Ugliest Sweater. So uh, I don't want to read this whole thing. And there are a few reasons why I don't want to, and that is because I will trip over my words and I think it will be more beautiful and more impactful for you to read it for yourself. Um, but I want to read a couple excerpts because it was gorgeous. So bear with me while I find them. There might be some cutting in and out, cutting in and out. Um, but yeah, let me... Read, read some of this to you. Okay. <clears throat> Not long ago, Michelle Obama posed... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Not long ago, Michelle Obama posted a black and white photo of herself on Instagram, cozy in an armchair, a nearby side table displaying an adorable baby pic of Malia and Sasha. She is barefoot, dressed in white legged jeans and a satin shirt, smiling widely as she looks down at her knitting. Every time I tell people how much I love to knit, she writes in the caption, they seem so surprised. And I thought, why? I suspect it's because knitters, unlike Mrs. Obama, are presumed to be aging ungracefully, prim, elderly, probably white ladies, rocking away on the porch in cultural irrelevance. Before I refute that, yarn lovers come in all ages, genders, sexualities, and races. I want to ask, even if it were true, so what? The dismissal, the reflexive derision of women from midlife onward, especially if we stop chasing social media standards of beauty, is a nasty form of ageist sexism. Besides that, imagine innocuousness can be a strength, even a superpower. Knitting is considered a craft, one you begin by casting on, evoking spells and witchery, a kind of practical magic. 
What greater sorcery is there really than making something, whether turning raw fiber to thread or raw flour to bread, or engaging in the ultimate creative act, conjuring new humans from nowhere at all. Our needles have been a sharp political tool wielded to fight injustice, to express both patriotism and protest, especially when other outlets were forbidden. No matter how you ended up feeling about those pink pussy hats, it was no accident that women's first collective act of dissent after the election of President Donald Trump was to knit. It goes on. It is beautiful. It is powerful. It talks about craft and activism and the power of knitting and what we can do and how we help and how knitting has been used through time, through many, many decades to make change, to help in times of need. It's just it was beautiful and it's just so so beautifully written as I'm sure you can get from my like awkward reading of the first few paragraphs so I highly highly recommend that you read this amazing amazing opinion article by Peggy Ornstein the revolutionary power of a skein of yarn so good I mean so good so I will link it below. But that is all that I have to share with you today. Thank you for bearing with me after not sleeping for many, many hours. I am going to go head to the witch store and get some tea. And I'm going to work on my sewing project so that I can bring you a just delightful little prize. So Again, if you want to be entered to win this beautiful bag, this beautiful project bag that inside has two skeins of yarn, some stitch markers, some tea, and a book, then please comment below your favorite genres, genres you love to read, your favorite books that you've read so far in the last few months let me know. Thank you so much for being here, for supporting my creative endeavors, and for just like adding support and warmth and comfort throughout the last couple of years. I can't believe it. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll see you soon. Bye.